It's the small things that make great games. Things you might not have thought of before you started working on that perfect Souls-like action RPG with farming mechanics. Things like footstep sound effects. That's why I'm gonna show you a great method of implementing footsteps using tile maps. This method I prepared for you uses adaptive sounds based on the surface the player walks on. It supports stacked tile map layers and it uses multiple sounds per surface for variety. And the best part, it's really easy to implement. I think we're ready. Let's go though. I already set up this level and the player which can move around it. And really quickly, I'll show you how to set up the tile maps. As you can see in the file system, I already have the tile maps folder, which has the dirt, grass and snow folders, and each one has the appropriate tile set image. The way I made these 47 tile tile sets is I drew 16 plus 1 tile sets in A-Sprite and I used this cool website called WebTiler, which I'm going to link just for you bro, down in the description, in which you can just drag and drop your tile set and it just creates the 47 piece tile set ready for Godot, right there. As you can see, I just drag and drop this and it doesn't look quite right, but that's because the wrong template is selected by default on the left. If I select the 16 plus 1, boom, that's the tile set ready for Godot. If you don't want to create these tiles yourself, I've been extra nice to you this time around and I actually created a GitHub repo for this project so you can find these tile sets and the sounds we're going to use later in there. This one's for being patient with me while I was trying to remember what my YouTube password is. Okay, so we create a new scene for the dirt, we're going to call it dirt and we're going to make the root node be tile map layer. Clicking on the root node we can see in the inspector that the tile set is empty, so let's change that. You can see that the tile set itself has a lot of properties, but we're just going to focus on the terrain sets for now. Let's expand that and create a new terrain set by clicking add element. Inside it we can expand the terrains, drop down and click add element again to create a new terrain. This time it asks us for a name and we're going to put in dirt because it only makes sense. And for the color you can see this brown and you can think, okay, so this is pretty appropriate for dirt, but that's not what you should do because this is the color that will be overlaid when we paint our auto tiling bit masks. So it's not going to be easily seen on our brown tile map. So actually change it to something more clearly visible like a green, for example. Now in the bottom panel, we can switch into the tile set tab and we can drag and drop our tile set image on the left here. Godot will pop up with this dialog asking us if we wanted to automatically create our tiles. And of course, we're going to just say yes, because easy life. Now we switch into the paint tab where we can choose which properties we're going to paint over our tile set. Here in the drop down we're going to choose terrains and this will prompt us to pick a terrain set and a terrain. So we only have terrain set 0 and the only terrain we have is dirt. Now you can choose the tiles which will be affected by this terrain and if you're using a tile set like this one it's going to be all of the tiles so just paint over all of them. And this is the fun part of actually painting these auto tile bit masks. And if your tileset follows the standard layout for Godot, like mine does, you can just copy this pattern down and your auto tiling will work perfectly. That's pretty cool and it wasn't even hard to do, right? But now I'm gonna show you what tile maps are really capable of. Collapse the terrain sets drop down and expand the custom data layers. Click add element and this is going to add some new custom data to the tile map. It's going to ask for a name and we're going to type in footstep sound. And for the type, we're going to switch from any to string. Back in the paint tab, click on the properties drop down, and you can see right at the bottom under custom data that our new footstep sound appears. Click on that, and we can input which footstep sound we want on this tile map. We're going to type in dirt because this is a dirt tile map, and now we have to paint this value over all the tiles which we want to have the footstep sound, which is all of them. You can see now how all the tiles in your tile map have the word dirt painted across them. And this is how you know you set it up correctly. So you can just repeat these same steps to make your grass and snow tile sets. And I'm just gonna do this quickly. New tile map layer scene, new tile set, new terrain, call it grass, pick a color that will stand out on the green like a pink, switch to the tile set tab and drag in your tile set, switch over to the paint tab and from the drop down choose terrains, choose the grass terrain and paint over all of the tiles. And now paint the auto tiling bit masks just like we painted before. On the right, expand custom data layers and add a new layer, which is again going to be called footstep sound. The type is going to be string. And now you can switch from terrains to the footstep sound custom data layer, type in grass for the value and paint over all the tiles. And once again, the same process for the snow tile map. 
new tile map layer scene, new tile set, new terrain, cold snow, and pick a nice blue color. Switch to the tile sets tab, drag and drop your tile set in, switch to the paint tab and paint in the terrain. Paint in the auto tiling bit masks and switch to the custom data layers and add a new element which is once again going to be called footstep sound and switch the type to string. Switch over to painted footstep sound custom data layer and for the value type in snow and paint over all the tiles. Now if you followed along and even if you had no previous knowledge of tile maps before, if you followed along and done this 3 times with me, you just became a 1% better developer than you were 5 minutes ago. But let's get even better. Let's add these tile maps to our level. And first of all I'm just going to add a node to the just to group them up and call it tile map layers. I'm going to move it above the players so the tile maps appear behind him. Then let's instance all the tile maps in the order in which we want to layer them. So first dirt, then grass and then snow. Now select your dirt tile map layer and in the bottom you want to be in the tile map tab. In the top left of this window you'll see the terrain tab in which you can choose your dirt terrain and start painting. I'm just gonna cover a large area of my level with a rectangle of these dirt tiles just as a basis. And for the grass and snow tile maps you can just get creative and paint whatever you want. Now comes the fun part cause we actually get to do some coding. We're gonna create a footstep sound manager script which is going to get auto loaded later on and this will actually help us to play these sounds that we defined in the tile maps. So create a new script and call it footstep sound manager. We can just delete all this boilerplate code and start fresh. First we need to initialize an array which will hold all our tile map layers. So I just called it tile maps and I even typed it out as an array of tile map layers. Next we will define a dictionary called footstep sounds which will hold all the sounds for each surface we're gonna walk on. So the keys of this dictionary are going to be the same as the custom data layers we set up in our tile maps. So this is dirt, grass and snow. And the values of the dictionary will be arrays of preloaded sound effects for each surface. I already have my sounds ready here in the SFX folder and as you can see there are three sounds for each surface. You can also find these sounds in the GitHub repository. So all I have to do is write preload and then just drag and drop the sound into the parentheses and let Godot figure out the path for it. And just like that we preload the three sounds for each surface. Now we move on to the bread and butter of the script which is a function called play footstep which has just one parameter called position of type vector2. This is the position at which we want to play the footstep. So the idea is to loop through all the tile maps in our tile maps array and for each try to find the tile at a specified position. Of course if our tile maps overlap like they do we might get multiple tiles at the same position. So this is why we'll define a tile data array and initialize it as empty to start with. Then we can start looping through all our tile maps and first of all we need to get a tile position in the tile map local coordinates. So to do this we can use tilemap.local to map and pass in the argument position. Now we can get the data of the tile by writing tilemap.getCellTileData and passing in the tile position. If we get any data, in other words, if there is a tile at this position, we can just add it into our tile data array. Outside of the for loop, we can check if we found any tiles, in other words, if tile data dot size is greater than zero. In that case, we can get the tile type by getting the back element of the tile data array, that is the last one that went in, which is going to be the topmost tile map tile, and calling get custom data on it, passing in footstep sound which is the name of the custom data element we defined in our tile map layers. Just to be sure we should check if our footstep sounds dictionary even has this tile type key in it. And if it does we're gonna create a new audio stream player 2D. We're gonna set its stream to footstep sounds at the key tile type dot pick random. So we'll pick one of the three preloaded sounds we set up in the dictionary. Then we're gonna add the audio player as the child of the root. We're gonna set its global position to the past in position parameter and we're gonna call play on it. We should await the audio player's finished signal and after it just queue free the audio player. Now we should auto load this script and you already know how it goes. Project, project settings, globals, auto load tab, click on the folder icon, find the footstep sound manager.gd, double click it and press add. Now this script is available from every other script in our project which is great cause we're gonna need it. 
And we're gonna need it for two reasons. The first is that tile map array is empty and we need a way to fill it so we can actually do something with our footstep sound manager. And the other is to call that play footstep function, which is going to happen whenever our player takes a step. So how do we fill up that tile maps array? Well, it's pretty easy if we just add a script to all our tile map layers. Create a new script in the tile maps folder and call it footstep tile map. Also make sure that it inherits from tile map layer. Inside the script, we're just gonna keep the ready function. And here we're going to access footstep sound manager's tile maps array and call pushback on it and pass in self. So we basically just added the tile map layer on which the script is attached to to the tile maps array of the footstep sound manager. Now we have to attach the script to every tile map layer we created. So the same script goes on dirt. Same script on grass and same script on snow. And with this we finished with our footstep sound manager. The last thing we have to do is adjust our player's animation so it plays the footstep sounds at appropriate frames. In the player script I will scroll past all this code, this is just normal movement code, nothing special, but at the bottom I will create a new private function called play footstep. This will be another simple one-liner, we only call footstep sound manager's play footstep function and pass in the player's global position. The only purpose of this function is that we can call it from the animation player. If I open up the animation player and switch to the player's run animation, you can see I have this very simple 6 frame animation. Now I'll find the frames in which it's most appropriate for the footstep sound to play. And for me, it's going to be this third frame because this is where the player impacts with the ground. You can see his foot is touching the ground. So let's add a new track and choose the call method track. Godot will ask us which nodes method we want to call here and that is going to be player. Then we can right click and press insert key. Godot then asks us which method we want to call and we can just pick our play footstep method. Nice. Now I'll just move on to the 6th frame, which is also a frame where the player's foot touches the ground, and I'll just copy and paste this same call method keyframe. Now if you've just watched the video and you didn't code along, go back and code this with me. This is how you actually grow as a developer. Yes, just watching the video does make you a slightly better developer because you picked up on some ideas here and there, but the substantial growth comes from doing the work yourself. YouTube thinks you like this video as well, so check it out.